The ideal biomaterial is biocompatible, clearly, so it works. It's friction resistant, corrosion resistant with good mechanical strength to take the body weight. And here you can see on the right hand side how you have a material which tends to flake off if you use this in your kitchen. And the bearing surfaces are mainly three. We will not discuss the patella. It's the femoral, the polyethylene component, and the tibial component. And of this, the polyethylene component, and choosing the right would mean the difference between a long-term performance and the premature need for revision surgery. And of this, the implant design and the material properties are something that you can elect to choose. Whereas the other things like the processing, the patient, the packaging, sterilization is something that happens directly from the company. The insole award paper of 202 talked about why total knee arthroplasties mm -hmm. were failing. And this is 20 years ago. And the reason was essentially polyethylene wear. The rest of the things of loosening, instability, infect infections, et cetera, were a smaller component of the problem. And why does polyethylene wear happen? There's adhesive wear where the coefficient of friction peels off the polyethylene. There's abrasive wear, which is due to the scratches. And you're very careful when you implant the, uh, the knee in, you make sure there is no third body wear, et cetera, because that would tend to wear away the polyethylene. And the fatigue wear clearly, just like a pin, if you break it, to break it, you move it, you get uh, stress and fatigue. That too causes the wear of the polyethylene. The conventional polyethylene you all have used and are aware of. This term, ultra high molecular weight polyethylene, we all are aware of, and your companies offer this. Then you have XLPE, the highly cross linked, and then vitamin E infused. These are the four main ones that I will discuss very briefly. Polyethylene, of course, we've seen from Chan Lee's time, is excellent, low friction, high impact resistance, self-lubricating su surface, etc. And there's no temperature sensitivity in the human biological environment. The ultra-high molecular weight polyethylene is something with molecular weight, which is more than 3.1 million grams per mole. It is better, 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 better. The highly cross-linked, and what is the difference here? It was first introduced in the 70s, and there is a 90% decrease in wear rate with increasing of the cross-linkage in the molecules of polyethylene. The cross-linking of polyethylene increases the wear resistance, but decreases the mechanical strength. And the ideal one would be that which increases the resistance and the mechanical strength. The newer generations of polyethylene have methods to remove the free radicals without affecting the mechanical strength. They anneal before, below the melting point. They melt it after the irradiation so that it all coheses together and add a free radical scavenger like vitamin E. It's excellent for hips, but hasn't proven to be so good for the knees, which is what we're talking about today. And the primary disadvantage is that the cross link density decreases, and hence it is not as strong as you want it to be. The materials for the femoral component, however, we all are aware of the chromium cobalt, the workhorse, Ceramic, the Japanese use the ceramic. Auxinium, which is available in India, and the coated metals, again, available in India. And the cobalt chromium continues to be the most widely used. There's mechanical wear, corrosion, allergy, and is it a carcinogen? Probably little highly overstated because we've used this for years. The ceramic bearing surfaces, and believe it or not, the Japanese feel this works very well. There's good wear resistance, but there would be brittleness. And if you tap this too hard, would it break? Well, if the configuration like this, it might, though in the hip, it works extremely well because it is enclosed. 
And the Japanese, as I said, have described this and feel that it works. In 223 total knees with ceramic femoral components, survivorship at six years was considered very good. And now I'm sure there are more papers suggesting it works, but it isn't still available to surgeons like us. The zirconium and auxilium, something that I use, and I, some of you must be using this, it is a methodology of creating the surface of your implant with polished auxilium and gives better mechanical strength and better wear resistance. In fact, this the company claims works for 30 years. And uh, it is not a coating, unlike some of the others. There's decreased friction and it reduces the adhesive polyethylene wear. Made by one of the companies, Smith and Nephew. And as I said, I have been using it both for the hip and for the knee and seems to work very well. The increased surface hardness is twice that of cast chromium cobalt, cobalt chromium, and it reduces the wear rate, which makes this extremely useful to last longer. Metal, metal sensitivity is also less because it does not have nickel. And the advantages over a ceramic is that it has better strength being metal. This shows how auxilium is better than the cobalt chrome in hips. And their published data has shown that 15 million cycles, which is a cycle for a year, 45 million cycles is how much this would last used against a polyethylene. The 30 year simulation results have been well published and demonstrably this should work better. But we'll come to this. And clinical data, right, likewise, is excellent. The coefficient of friction, as I said, is less. The abrasive wear is better. And the fatigue cycle permits this to be used for a longer period of time. Companies also have what they call the gold knee. This is multiple layers of layers applied on the knee. The femoral component and the tibial component are made with this material. It is twice as hard as auxinium and eight times harder than cobalt chrome. It reduces the abrasive PE wear, therefore, and the wetting angle is improved by 20%. The allergy prevention here is more, they claim, because the tibia also is made of the same material. However, the tibia is not an articulating surface, so it is debatable whether this is really a great advantage. It has outstanding biocompatibility, and as I said, is allergy preventive, higher wettability with cyanable fluid, and low friction, etc., which makes this a very good implant. The clinical data, which has been presented by papers which have come from the company, suggests that 90% survival is very good. A similar layer was available in the Columbus knee, which is no longer available in India. And these seven layers likewise made this a highly useful knee. However, there have been papers of the coating coming off, wearing out, and therefore this 21% coating delamination made this controversial at one point in time. What is the registry data regarding all these materials and all these knees? There is no difference in revision rate between coated and uncoated implants. There is no difference in revision rate between different types of coating. In fact, this is a knee that I put in about 18 years ago. Long before the auxinium was available, the company would give me non-auxinium knees. It's doing well 18 years down the line. So the take home message here is that do what you do best. It really doesn't matter. And if you have the right implants, presumably the ones which last longer will last longer. But the data from the registry 
does not support having more expensive implants. Thank you.